then we're going to pull everybody else up and we will be live with all the folks on ClayShare, on the ClayShare app, on Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo.com, everywhere. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips of ClayShare and tonight we are going to have a fun broadcast. We are going to be sharing the brand new speedball underglazes, which I glazed. Well, I used the underglazes yesterday in an impromptu live broadcast, which you can check that out on the ClayShare Facebook page. And then I clear glazed them and I put them in the kiln. And that's what I have here. So, oh my gosh, are these colors? These colors rock. They are off the charts. So the new speedball colors, there's 12 of them. And the deal is they wanted to do these really intense bright colors, which they have. And I wanted to see how they compared to their original 24. So these are all of Speedball's 24 colors right here. And then I have the 12 new ones right here. Now I'm gonna do a plate that will have them all on it, but I don't have one of those done yet. So. Here they all are. Look, and I'll show them in detail in a minute. We'll go close in. And uh, so look at, the, look at these colors. Look how yummy they are. So I did them as a solid two coat on these. And then I did some where I layered and I did more of an ombre. And we'll definitely do some close ups for you guys to see. Everybody tuning in. I um, unloaded these about 10 minutes ago. So I fired my kiln yesterday. I think I started it at four o'clock. And this is my little test kiln, my little L&L doll kiln. I started it at four. I did a medium speed glaze fire with a one and a half hour preheat and a 10 minute hold at the end that took 10 hours. It finished firing at 2 a.m. And now I'm able to unload it at, what is it? 4.30, I unloaded it. So it cooled from 2 a.m. to 4.30, 12, 14 hours of cooling that's pretty fast, pretty, pretty fast. So um, the saffron yellow is an unbelievably yummy color. So we'll go through these and I wanna compare them to, look at Speedball's regular yellow and then their yellow orange. And you can see it's almost like if you pre-mix the two together. So we're gonna do that. And what else do we got going on in Clay Share World? Oh, you like all these colors? You like these Speedball underglazes? You can win them because we have partnered with Speedball for the month of June to kind of help give them a big kickoff with the new colors. And we're giving away three 12 packs of the new color pints. So you're gonna get 12 pints, 12 pints, one of each of the new colors. And there's gonna be three winners. Now Speedball has set up um, the, the offer, right? the giveaway offer, and they are only shipping to people in the US, but if you win outside the US and um, you wanna pay shipping, Speedball might be willing to work with you. So that's one thing that um, we've done in the past for those of you outside the continental US. So just keep that in mind. If you win, might be able to, we'll work it out where you pay the shipping. So the colors are six cool colors and six warm colors and they're teal, leaf green, avocado, blue frost, royal purple, and then amethyst. Those are the cool colors. And then, like, we're cool, cool colors. And then for their warm colors, they have flame red, saffron yellow, carmine, peach, mandarin orange, and soft pink. So they're the new, new colors. And they, they blew me away. I only did two layers of underglaze, and look at the intensity you get of color. Like usually you have to do three coats to get this intensity. And I saw someone ask, are there any new greens? There's actually three greens. There's avocado, there is leaf green. They're very close. The avocado's a little lighter. And te teal, teal's kind of a blue green. So um, I, think, I think we should definitely switch to the overhead camera now for those of you who are watching on everywhere but Instagram. I'm sorry, Instagram folks, I, I can't change you want, that. You want full overhead or you want camera or you want picture in picture? We could do the big picture of the overhead right. is what I want to do. Because I want to show everybody the colors because I really want you to see these. Now these are full intensity straight out of the jar. 
And the other fabulous thing is, look at, look at the, how big this is. Look at this opening. Look how big it is. This was the opening Speedball had before. Right here. Look at it. That's a huge difference. Huge, huge. Try to put a brush in here. I mean, I have, but you're trying to put your brush in here. There's not much wiggle room at all. This, you have a party in here. You'll be swirling around with all kinds of big brushes. So you don't have to pour your underglaze out into another container to use big brushes. You can stick them right in. So that was a huge win. And that's something Speedball did because it listened to you, to all of you. So let's talk about the yummy colors. I know, Kathy, you're saying the colors are yummy. They make you think of projects to do. I know, and they're, they're just like good for any season. I was thinking they're very summery, but really, they, they would be good for any time of the year. Springtime, uh, they're autumnal right here with these pumpkin-y colors, squash colors right here. Even purples, I think, of autumn. And winter colors, look at that blue frost. So let's look at the new colors. And what I want to show you is the similar color that already exists from Speedball. So you can compare them. So if you plan to order some, you know what you're getting for colors. So this is a, a plate I made, and I actually have a class on how to make one of these. It's called a glaze test plate. But it's one big plate, and then you brush your underglaze on. You do one layer, two layer, three layers, so you can check the opacity and what three layers of underglaze give you, and that's the very edge of this plate. So you can see if, how translucent it is if you're going to water it down. And we're going to do watercolor pottery. I've got it, I've got it set. We're going to do that after we talk about the colors. So we'll get to that. So here we have the, the plate. And I'm just going to show you the colors one by one, and then we'll compare them to the plate. So here is soft pink. That's their new pink. If you looked at Speedball's pink before, that's this pink here. So their pink before was um, much warmer. And now they're soft pink. So they still have the pink, but they have soft pink too. So you get that. Um, so look at that. That's amazing. So did I test on B-Mix? Yes, this is. So Amanda wants to know what clay I used. For these little tests here, this is B-Mix. All these clays are B-Mix. Now, darker clays are not going to show the darker colors as well, but they will show the light colors. So think about the tone you're using. If you're using a dark clay, you're going to want to stick to the lighter, brighter colors. If you're using a light clay, you can use any. Now, you can always put a white color down first and then put your colors on top. So if you're using a dark clay, you could put a white down and then switch. So I think I'm just going to sit this plate down here, right here. I want to make sure everybody can see it. So soft pink right here in the little magnet. And here's the existing pink. So there's, there's that one. This is carmine. That's that new, really intense red. And if you look at it compared to the regular red, it's much deeper. It has more blue in it. But it's not as dark as their burgundy. I think this is an amazing red. If you are looking for a gorgeous red, this one is rich and it has a lot of depth to it. This one here is considered flame red. And it's funny because their flame red is a little orangier than their regular red. So here's their regular red. Here's their orange. Here's their flame red. So the flame red is a little more orange. And then the mandarin orange is just one shade lighter. I should, I should hold these together, like these three. This is flame red. This is mandarin orange. This is carmine. So you can see these reds here. Look how close they are to each other. The flame red is a little deeper. The mandarin orange is more of a bright, almost neon-y orange, like a really rich, yummy orange. And again, if you look at it, it's definitely deeper than their traditional orange that Speedball has. And then if we move over and we look at the peach, I was surprised. I thought the peach would be lighter, but this is a really intense, deep color. So if you compare it to their previous colors, it's somewhere between the melon and the yellow orange, I think. It's yummy, though. It's really nice. And then the color that might be, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it definitely is one of the standouts, is the saffron yellow. This is a crazy intense yellow. And remember, this is just two coats brushed on quickly. 
look at it, it's between the yellow orange and the yellow. It's definitely an intense yellow. A lot of rich color payoff on that one. And then we're gonna move to the greens. Now, the two new greens are the leaf green and the avocado green. The avocado is a little lighter. They're very close. If I was gonna buy these colors, I would only get one. I don't think I'd go with both, but the avocado is the lighter. The leaf green is the darker and it's actually lighter than their medium green. So if you look at it, and I actually like this color better and it's lighter than the pine green. So I, I never have, I don't mind the medium green, but I don't use it much. It's not my favorite color from Speedball, but I have to tell you the leaf green, I really love. I like the avocado too. I don't know if I would pick up both, but if you win the set of 12, you, you get them. So you can just play with them both and see which one you like the best, right? And then the teal is actually the color I've been waiting for right here because aqua and turquoise I use all the time. They're like my two favorites. And the sea blue is nice, but it's a little too, too dark. So now we have the teal, which is the next darkest one. It'll work perfectly with these two. So I see there's a, a question. Can you mix them with white for pastels? Yes, Joy, you can. All of Speedball's underglazes are infinitely mixable, meaning you can mix them with each other as much as you want and get new colors. So you're never stuck with one color. You can change it up and turn it into a new color. And it will be clear glazing, zinc free. So you will be, Brenda, yeah. So this right here, what I did is I applied two coats of the underglaze and you let it dry all the way. And then once it's dry all the way, you can brush on one coat of clear glaze, let that first coat dry, and then brush your next coat on if you're brushing. Don't go back and forth. So we, I can actually do, I could probably do a quick uh, demo for you, but you're gonna just brush your clear on, let it dry, don't do this. Don't go back and forth over multiple times because that's how you pull it off. That's how you actually will go ahead and pull your color off. You can safely brush it on, you don't have to sponge it on, just make sure your underglaze is dry all the way before you do it. All right, so this is the new uh, Frost Blue, which it's like a baby blue, I think. And this is the sky blue that they have before, and it's, it's completely different. So I think this is a really great standalone one. This, it's like a, like a cloud blue. I love it. It's great. And then this here is the royal purple. And you can compare it to the original purple. The royal purple is more blue. I actually like it better than the original purple. And then amethyst is just a gorgeous purple color. And you can see it has more intensity than the violet. The violet that they have already is a little grayer. So here we have the amethyst. So there they are, full strength, two coats of each. And the clear glaze I used on these here was my clear 2167, which is a zinc-free clear. And that recipe is on ClayshareResources.com. You can go ahead and make it yourself. But there's a lot of companies that make zinc-free clears. And this one is a dip glaze, but actually I did brush it on because sometimes I brush my clear glaze on. And uh, these right here, again, were all done on B-Mix. And so it's a lighter clay. So again, two, two coats, full strength. Now, if you don't cover it with glaze, what do they like? They are a dry matte, like Amico Velvet under glazes. They won't be glossy if you don't put a glaze on top. So these require a glaze of some sort to go on top if you want a glossy surface. If you just want a dry matte surface, you could just leave them alone. You could have that rough surface if you want it, but then it wouldn't be good for food. So make sure if you're using them for food, you're gonna go ahead and glaze them with some glaze. Any glaze you want, pick a glaze, any glaze. So now I had a little fun. Um, I mixed some up and I did multiples on one just to see how they would pair together. So here we have saffron and mandarin orange, two coats there. Here we have the carmine down here, carmine, soft pink, and flame red. That turned out nice, like that a lot. Amethyst and the blue frost. And then I did the leaf green with teal, great combination. And I did the amethyst with the avocado. And I'm happy with those, just playing with the colors and see how they would, they would pair together. 
And then, so where can you get the 12 colors? You can get them from clayscapespottery.com and you can save 20%. You can use the code that, uh, that they have, it's Explore 10, to save 20%. And I have a link I can share for them. And also Clay King has something going on, a promo right now too, which I will share the link for both those. And you can save, and you can pick whoever you want to shop from. So we'll go through these. These are ones that I put the underglaze on and then I wipe back. So you can see the clay coming through. So this here is the Carmine Flame Red and Saffron on this one. So that's what I did here. Oh, actually no, Flame Red, Mandarin Orange, Saffron. So the Flame Red and the Mandarin Orange blend together almost seamlessly. Really beautiful, beautiful transition. This is soft pink, peach, and carmine. Look at that carmine. That is a good red. I mean, here it is on that pot at the bottom right here. That is a great red. And then teal, the royal purple, and the amethyst. And this one I believe I used is the, it's this one here, leaf cream and the frost blue. So that's what I did here. So the white back looks a lot better than you imagined they would, Lori, right? You don't know what they're going to be like. So here it is, you know, here they are full strength, like here in my hand, right? And here's the same colors wiped back. So it changes it. It lets the texture show and it gives it kind of a distressed vintage look. I, I like it a lot. We're going we're gonna to go to one thing that I think really stands out. And that's this little lace piece right here. So my favorite way to use Speedball for putting in texture and then wiping back is on lace. Because it really shows that lace off. You can see right here. This is with the teal. And then I did just two coats of the teal on the edge. Because I, I wanted to finish that off. So you can see that right there. That turned out really nice too. So. That one is a winner. And then I did a couple small dishes. This is with the, um, I have to remember, this is with the mandarin orange, the flame red, and the saffron wiped back. And this is the teal with the royal purple and then the amethyst on the edges wiped back too. So gives you some different options. So as long as you cover them with underglaze, they are food safe, yes. Cover them with some clear underglaze, they'll be food safe. Perfectly fine. Make sure you're, make sure whatever, you could use a celadon though, it doesn't have to be clear. You could have a little tint of color, just make sure that glaze is food safe. But most clears are food safe. There's really nothing in there to leach out into you, um, into your food. So let me just show the folks there on Instagram, those colors there. So you have a lady who made lace doilies for you and you're using clay. Oh, Diana, that's a lovely thing. Yeah, and he, so here is that teal. I love this. Um, and I had one more piece that didn't fit in the, that was lace that didn't fit in the kiln because I had to put all this in. And I ran out of space. So I will be doing another uh, little test kiln. And we're gonna do some water, what I call watercolor pottery. And that is where I take the underglazes and I thin them down so that they're more pastel. Now you can see how intense these colors are. So if you really want bright, juicy colors, I mean, look at this. This is two coats. It's, it's fabulous. The same with this red. This is the carmine. And that carmine is a, it's a fabulous red. And that's the teal. Just so good. None of them were streaky. None of them were grainy. All of them were smooth and easy to brush on. Basically, just it was easy. They were great to work with. So I'm going to sit these off to the side. But now I have them as a color reference, right? So I can just keep these in a little box. Or I was thinking about affixing them to a board. And then that way I can just have them epoxied onto a board that I can hang by my kiln. And then I have these right there as a color reference. So let's move these off to the side, but I'm gonna keep them so I can look at them because I wanna be able to decide what colors I'm gonna use. 
Shannon, you got your Bailey pottery wheel, but now you've got to put it together. That's, I know, it's a little bit of work, but it's actually really fun. Plus, when you put your pottery wheel together, by yourself or with help, you can have help, you'll know more about your wheel. You'll know how it works more. And it, it's, it's better in the long run to know about it. So I'm just gonna scooch these guys off to the side. So this right here is a Mishima technique where you actually will cover the piece. I cover mine with a layer of wax when it's leather hard, and then I carve into it, and then I do an inlay with black underglaze, speedball black underglaze, and then you wipe back the excess underglaze, and it reveals basically a line drawing. And then I bisque fire it, and during that bisque fire, all of the wax burns off, so I'm just left with my black inlay, just my black lines. So I like to go ahead and go back in with watered down underglaze and color these in. And so that's why I call it watercolor pottery because I'm actually turning it into watercolor pottery. I'm turning the underglazes into like a watercolor. And you'll put one layer on, and if you want a more intense color, you put a second layer on. So you can build up that color. And here's a plate that I did that's finished now. This has clear glaze on top. Then, after it was fired, I put Mother of Pearl Luster on and fired it a third time. So this piece here and this plate have been fired three times. They've been in the kiln three times. So you don't have to do the Mother of Pearl Luster uh, on it, but sometimes when I do these pieces, I really like to do it. I just love that finish. And the inside of this picture this picture right here is, is my chun blue. Is that, that right there? So we're gonna set these to the side, but that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how I do this. Now, on clayshare.com, I have a class on Mishima. That's what this technique is. And you can go watch that class and you can learn how to do your own inlay. So you can, I'm gonna share the, with the folks watching, you can see that detail of this piece. So you can learn how to do it, and what you put into your clay is entirely up to you. If you want to do flowers like I do, you can do flowers. If you want to do something more geometric, you can do that. If you want to do lighthouses, if you want to do seashells or sea life, or if you just want to do lots of crisscrosses or circles or whatever it is you like to draw, put it in clay. And if you don't know how to draw, I've got some basic how to draw on pottery classes that will walk you through drawing things like leaves and flowers and paisleys, and they're very simple classes. They're not made to teach you to be a fabulous um, drawing drawer. It's to teach you to not be afraid of drawing on your clay. That's what they're for. So I'm gonna use the new colors, and although they're really intense and bright, I'm gonna thin them down with water, and we're gonna see what they look like. I don't know what they will do. We're gonna find out. Pat, you love the Mother of Pearl Luster. It's, it is gorgeous. It really is. So I like to do my palette with my warm colors on one side and my cools on the other. And so I'm going to start with that Carmine. And to load my palette up, I'm going to get a bucket of clean water here. And you can use any palette you want. I like these little 99 cent disposable ones. I mean, they're technically disposable, but I think I've had this one for about eight years. So I think disposable is uh, kind of up to interpretation. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start with the carmine. I'm just going to put that in there. See how I just use my brush? I kind of swirl it in, and then I wipe my brush off on the bottle and then just swish it out. And someone was asking me, how do I make sure all of the underglaze or glaze is out of the brush? So I swoosh it, and then I just kind of pinch down my bristles, just like that. And if there was still underglaze or glaze in there, it would um, be on my finger, so I would see it, so I would know. Next, we're going to go with the flame red. So we have the carmine, the flame red. And I don't need a lot because I'm going to be watering these down. So Lisa wants to know, would regular food safe clear glaze change anything color-wise? 
as opposed to the zinc free. So what zinc does sometimes in a glaze, sometimes zinc will eat at your underglaze. It'll actually eat away at it. So that's the reason we always say zinc free, but sometimes it can do some really cool things. So, you know, if you have a test piece, give it a try. Always test before you do a big piece anyways. Uh, I, don't, I don't want you all use, like taking one of your masterpieces and subjecting that to something you've never used before. You always want to test it. That's why I did these little guys right here, right? That's why I have these because I've got these tests. I know what these colors are going to look like. So I'm not starting from scratch. I've got a reference point to work from. I see Susie said, even the pink is good. Yeah, that pink, that pink is nice. It's a very nice light pink. Oftentimes with pink, you get um, kind of a Pepto-Bismol-y pink. This one's softer. It's not, not that Pepto-Bismol pink. It's a beautiful, soft pink. It's very nice. So now we're going to move over to, I'm going to put, speaking of pink, put the pink in here. So, you know, people will always ask about my, my process and I don't always share like the loading of the palette because I don't want you all to be bored, but this will give you an idea of how I do it because it's really simple. This is basically what I do. Oh, and I see Terry says they seem a little thin. When you first open them up, you have to stir them. I'm not stirring these up because I'm going to be thinning them down anyways. So let me just stir this one up. Just like with almost everything in pottery, all of our things are um, suspensions, not solutions, meaning the things that give us our colorants and our, our ceramic materials are suspended in water. So you have to stir them up. So look at how thick that is. Look at this. This is not thin. This is super thick. Look how thick that is. Blop. It's um, like yummy. So just keep in mind, you've got to stir things when you get them. And I wasn't really stirring them much because now I have to add a lot of water to that to get it to the workability that I'm going to need. But, you know, if I was just brushing these on straight, I would probably leave that, I would stir it up and leave it that thick. I wouldn't thin it down. So there's the avocado green and here's the leaf green and I think seeing them next to each other, you can see the leaf green is a little, a little, it's interesting. The avocado is more of a yellow to it and the leaf green's more blue. That's what I would, if I had to try to describe them. So Speedball does have a clear glaze and it is zinc free, yes. And I have used it. It's a brush on glaze. It's a cone five glaze. I've never tried it at cone six, although it might be fine there. But um, Speedball's glaze is zinc free and it's, it's made to work with their under glazes. So you shouldn't have any issues with it at all. So we've got the, I love these I love this pink and blue. I know they're kind of traditional baby colors, but I just love that they have them because a lot of us have babies in our lives and you want to make stuff for babies. Now you've got those pink and blues. So there's that blue frost. And then I'm going to put the purples in the middle because my palette is only a 10 well palette. It doesn't hold 12. So I will put the royal blue, the royal purple, which is the bluer of the two on this side. And then I will put the amethyst on the other. And so the name of this pink one is just soft pink. Speedball already has a pink. So I see there was a question about that. This is Speedball's pink. This is soft pink. So if you look at the two, the soft pink is much more of what I would consider a traditional pink. And they are underglazes, yes, 
Yes, these are all underglazes. And what I love about underglazes is you can use them with a gloss glaze, satin glaze, matte glaze, whatever you like to use for finish, you can use these under. They can be brushed on, and you could actually airbrush them on too. And I'll be doing a class on that for Clay Share. Um, we're about ready to do that. I have to build my spray booth, and that's the last thing I have to do, and I can get that class going. So that'll be coming in the next few weeks. So everybody's been waiting patiently for that to happen. So I have my palette ready. Now we're going to go and start with this piece here. So the thing about these underglazes is all of the colors, whether it's their new 12 or their, additional, their original 24 colors, have a lot of payoff. So you can thin them down and still get a really nice result. Uh, Barbara, you clean as you go too, I know. Well, if you don't, it gets away from you and then you have a huge mess, right? <laughs> All right, so let me pull my palette. I'm, a, I'm righty, so I like to work with the piece that I'm gonna be adding the color on my left side and my palette on my right and actually I will put my water on my right hand side as well. So usually I'll have palette, water, so that I go from my water to my palette to my piece. So that's how I will usually work. And I like to start with my lighter colors first and then work my way towards the darker. And again, I'll just give you the names of the colors. So the, the new colors, soft pink, Carmine, Flame Red, Mandarin Orange, Peach, Saffron Yellow, Avocado Green, Leaf Green, Teal, Blue Frost. This one is the Royal Purple and the Amethyst. Ha! I win the test. I passed the test. I guessed them all. So uh, Speedball does not have a sample pack of the new colors. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, I, I would love them to do. I asked if they were going to do a sample pack, but they currently are not. They sell them in 2 ounces and 16 ounces. These are the 16 ounce size, so you're getting a, a pint. It comes in pints. So we're going to start with the peach. We're going to go in with the peach, and I'm going to water it down. My water is a little dirty, but it'll, it'll work. So you can see I thin it way down. I really do thin it down until it's about watercolor. And you won't see an intense color right away. It, it takes a little while for the color to build up. So I will go ahead and add multiple layers of color. And the clay that I used here is Laguna B Mix, which is a cream. And I think it works perfectly. You could use a porcelain if you want, but for this Mishima technique, you need a light clay if you're going to use a dark inlay. If you want to do a light inlay, you can do that with a dark clay. So I might pull you all in a little closer. See if I can get you in a little closer. That might be as close as we can get tonight. I think so. Yep, that's it. So we got a little color in there. And you can blend them. So I think I want to do, I want to do red at the edges and I want to use the carmine and I'm going to use the flame red. So this is the flame red. I'm going to put that on first and then I'm going to do the carmine on the very edge on top. So it's very light like watercolor. And you can thin it way down. See how I'm keeping it really thin? But this will show. That's how I did my finished pieces that I have. And I'll grab those in a sec and show you. So if you see these here, the technique I'm doing right now, you can see those colors. You're just building up light layers. Victoria, you own every peach mid-fire glaze except this one. Uh, I think you will love it. Look at, look at that peach. It's really yummy. 
So that was the flame red. Now we're going to go in with the carmine. And I just want to do the very edges with the carmine. So that'll create just a little dark area right here. And once you let it dry all the way, you can easily go back in and add another layer of color if you want to build up more. I like to start lighter and then add more as I go. And the other thing is, uh, I'll show you. I wasn't going to, but if you mess up, let me show you what I can do. I'll have to start over, but um, if you mess up, watch. Just scrub it off with a clean sponge. Now it looks darker because I got the clay wet, but as it dries, it'll be the same color. So if you mess up, look what I just did. I just wiped it all off, like no big deal. And then I go back in. You might want to let it dry before going back in and re-adding your color. But you can easily go in and fix your mistakes. You can also use Q-tips to go in and scrub out little areas. So if you had a little area like right here and you didn't want to use just the corner of the sponge, you could use a Q-tip. So that's this one here. You can also take a damp, damp paintbrush and go in and scrub away if you've got too much. You can do that as well. So any watercolor technique that you know um, you can go ahead and apply that to this technique. You can use that here. So these colors are available from Clayscapes Pottery. You can get them. They're Speedball's new colors. I also have a discount code for Clay King I'll have to share with you all, and I'll get that. Will they be a bit softer when they're thinned down? Yes, they will, Terry. That's a really good, good um, question. Yes. So if we look at this test plate that I have here, and you look at it, you'll notice the edge is much more intense and the center part is lighter. That's because that's one coat. The center is two coats and the edge here is three coats. So if we look at this one coat, I'm actually thinning it down a little more than that. So it will be even less intense than it was at one layer, at one coat. So you can see, look, we've got our flower going here. And if you wanted to go in and add another color on top, just wait for it to dry. And then you could go in with, say you want to put the saffron yellow in to really have a pop of color. And you can put them on top of each other. So I'm going to put some saffron yellow right in on top of that flame orange that I did. And again, I thinned it down. But do you see how you can really build up your color and your depth? And this is not the only way to use these. I just want everybody to be aware that this is just one of the many ways that you can use them. Not, I'm not saying you have to do this. This is just one technique. And actually, I've got some pieces. I'll, put it, I'll do a couple for you that are full strength. I figure I'll show you how to apply it full strength. So what I would do with this is I would just keep going, working my, my piece. And you know, next, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the green for my leaves. So I'll put that on. And then just work my way around until I finish the piece. Something like this will take me a few hours to do just one vase. So it's a little time consuming, but as you look at this right here, it's totally worth it. Get that so you can see it. So Barbara has a question. She says, she thought under glazes were for wipe back. Why wouldn't you just use a regular glaze to do it? So underglazes can be wiped back, but they don't have to be. The great thing about an underglaze versus a glaze is you can have one glaze, one glaze, one clear glaze. And you can have many, many underglazes. And you can use the underglazes for staining. You can use it for wiping back. You can use it for full color. Or you can use it for the watercolor pottery. You can also use underglazes for stamping. 
You can use them for painting directly on pottery. You can use them for making your own underglaze transfers. You can use them for you with um, stencils and decals. So underglazes are really versatile and you could then just only own one clear glaze to go on top of everything and you would never need another glaze. So they're just another product. Uh, why I wouldn't use a glaze because there's no way I can control a glaze as well as I can control an underglaze for painting like this. Also, for um, painting on pottery, if I wasn't just you know, filling in my already drawn lines, sometimes I will paint freehand on something. A glaze isn't as easy to control as the underglazes are. And I see some questions about my brush. This is actually a Sumi brush, and someone said it looks stiff. Let me, let me tell you about this brush. It is not stiff. This is a Sumi brush. It only looks stiff because I'm pulling it always back out to a point. Um, they're also sometimes called bamboo brushes, and they're used for Chinese or Japanese calligraphy, sometimes that's what you'll see them called, but it is completely flexible. Look at that. Bend it right around. And you just get it wet, pull it to a point, and it's ready to go. But it's not stiff. It's um, actually really flexible. It's a, it's a really great brush. You have a lot of control with these. So how do you wipe back the underglaze and what is the effect? So you must be just tuning in. This is a wiped back piece. You apply the lace um, when it's wet, make your piece, Apply your underglaze, wipe back, put your clear glaze on top. Actually, Kev, you want to grab me one of my lace cake stands? You'll have to move stuff off of them, because so you'll have to grab them. But um, they're on the bottom shelf, I think, over there. So I use, here's a wiped back versus a solid color. Look at that. Wow, so good. He's got a piece. So here's one I want to show you with speedball underglazes. Um, this is a lace cake plate that I made. So you can see lace all the way around, lace on the top, and I applied the underglaze. This is their, tur their aqua, and then I wiped back. So you apply it, and then you wipe back. So the underglaze is left in the areas that are recessed and wiped off the raised area. So you, it looks like there's a doily. I mean, right? It looks like lace. And I, I did it on the side. So this is actually a clay share class that I did. One of the beginning classes when we first started clay share, um, about probably, I can say there, three years ago. So let me show you how to apply them. So if you want the black lines to show, you don't have to go back and try to white paint off the lines. Nope, you do not. No, the black lines are really in there. And you can see my black lines in this finished one. Clear as day, I don't go back and wipe. No, nah, I never do. Never go back and wipe. It'll stay. It's part of how the technique works. You know, when we apply them, we applied it a little thicker. So it's really down in there. So they stay. Can I put the link on my Amazon shop? Um, yeah, we'll put that up for you. We'll take care of that for you. So let's go ahead and use some, and I'll do some wiping back. And I want to actually see my colors because I want to I want to pick the ones I like the best. So I want to do a cactus color. And I'm going to use the leaf green. And then I want my pot to be the carmine and I want the little flower to be soft pink. So that's the colors full strength. I'm going to apply them and we'll wipe back. And I've got a couple of these we can play with. We can play with the colors and, and we can really have fun with them. So that's what I plan to do. And this is why whatever you have for underglazes, you should make some little test pieces. This, I rolled out a slab of clay, put some texture in it, use this cookie cutter. It is um, just a little, it could be a cupcake, but it's a cactus, whichever way you want to go. Uh, Sugar Vale is the company that made this one. It came in a two-pack with another cactus. And that's what I use to make these. And you just keep them around. You know, I use them for glaze tests. They could be magnets when they're finished. But it's a great resource because now I can have these three colors here. And I can say, yes, those are the, that's the color palette I want. Or maybe if I want light blue instead. Or if I wanted a bright orange. You know, I have these options because I have this big test tile, I can really see what that color is going to look like. All right, so we're going to start with the 
I picked the leaf green, so let me grab that. And I'll show you, we'll just go full strength with these. I know, Huck, isn't it great? They went to the wide mouth jars, look at that. Because we can just dip right in before, before we had this teeny weeny, teeny weeny. Mine's covered in underglaze too, so it looks even smaller than it really is. You thought it was a cupcake, you know what? It can be a cupcake if you want it to be. Kevin thought it was a cupcake too, why, why can't it? Right? Why can't it be a cupcake? Or an ice cream cone. Oh, an ice cream cone. You know what? I think it just depends how you decorate it. Because I make it green, it's going to be it's going to be a succulent. It's going to be a cactus. Cuz I made it green. But if you wanted to make it um, another color, you could do that. And what I love about Speedball's underglazes is you can actually put them all the way down to the bottom and they don't stick to the shelves. So there's the cactus, cute. Let's do two coats. I'm gonna do the cactus solid and I'm gonna wipe back for the pot, I think. So fill that in with two coats. So I've only been doing two coats and the intensity has been really nice. I love that. Um, a lot of people thought it was a cupcake. It can be what you want because you know what? When you're making pottery, you're making it for you. You make it whatever you want it to be, right? You do, you do what you want in your studio. <laughs> the cotton candy pink. Yeah, it is. It's like cotton candy. I think the pink, oh, I think these would look fabulous together, the pink and the blue. I think they'd be amazing. So this is this red here when it's finished. So here it is before it's finished. And it does change, it gets much richer. And I'm thinking I might wipe away some of this red to give it more of a vintage like, you know, an old pot so that it is worn away a little bit. And then the last color I'm going to use that soft pink. Now normally when I'm working, uh, if I'm using all these underglazes and I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing now, I'll actually just have my brushes in my underglazes and I'll just not rinse my brush out because I'll have one brush per jar of underglaze. For me that just it is a good workflow. So I don't have to keep switching and cleaning a brush out. And also I don't want to waste any underglaze by swishing it out, right? And so here's the pink we're using right there. It's that pink right there. And we'll put two coats on. We'll let that dry. So I'm going to wipe the pot off a little bit, just a little bit. And then maybe we'll do a pink and blue mix because I got this right here. I think we could have a lot of fun with these swirlies and then maybe we'll wipe, wipe back after we do that. I just saw someone say what happens on clay share stays on clay share. <laughs> That's right. Shh. We make pots. We don't, nobody else has to know. They're just for us. Clay Vegas. Clay Vegas. Sillies. So I'm just going to wipe it back. And the thing is, if you wipe it back and you don't like the way it's looking, guess what? You can just cover, cover it again with the underglaze. That's all. You don't, you're not stuck with it. And actually, sometimes I'll do this. Let me do this um, technique. So sometimes I'll actually wipe. I'm going to wipe off more than I expected to, but I'm doing it on purpose. So I'll wipe off a lot. Then I'll go back in with my color watered down and do just a wash. So you don't have to, let me get my palette here and add some water to that. So you don't have to use it always full strength. So I have it full strength and then I'm just going to do a wash. Look at that. See how we just did a wash on top? So we wiped it back and then did a wash. So it still has some color to it, right? It's not just blah, but it's, it's a wash. 
that'll be fun to see how that's going to turn out when it's done. We have to wait and see. I might be loading my baby kiln again tonight and firing that again. <laughs> yeah, that little kiln gets a lot of, she's been busy. So do I always use underglaze on bisque fired clay? Not always, but if I'm going to do scorfito, I'll apply underglaze first, then carve through the scorfito. You can also um, apply underglaze as your main color. The only issue you have when it's not fully dry, if you're adding underglaze to something that's still leather hard, if it has a handle and you get it too wet, you could cause that handle to crack. So just keep that in mind. But you can use underglazes on wet clay. You, and when I do stencils, I often will put the stencil down on leather hard clay and then brush on my underglaze and then peel my stencil off. So you can use it then that way. So it's just really up to what you want to do with it. It's very versatile. All right, so I'm going to do pinks and blues on this one, I said. Pinks and blues. And I will put a clear glaze on top of these, yes. But you could put a cel celadon. You could put something with a little tint of color if you wanted to. You're not, you're not locked into having to use a clear. So we're just going to have a little bit of fun with this. Some pinks, some blues. The texture on here was from a clay texture roller that I carved myself. And you can actually carve your own. I have a class that teaches you how to make a textured roller. It's really fun. And I think I show you three or four different ways to make one. And that way you can have this really personalized texture that nobody else is going to have because you made it. Oh, Cynthia wants to know what's the name of the Mother of Pearl product. It's called Duncan um, Mother of Pearl. Some places will sell it and they call it opal, but these are called lusters. Sometimes they call them overglaze enamels too, but we call it Mother of Pearl Luster, and that's what these are. And you can get luster in gold. You can get it in, um, it's actually like a white gold if you want a silver. They sometimes have it in copper and bronze or in all kinds of colors. And the underglazes look great with Maoka. Yes, they do. Uh, grab my Maoka pitcher, Kev. You know the white one with the underglazes? So you can also paint on top of glaze. What? That's right. You can glaze a piece and then paint right on it. And I have a Maolica with underglaze class. Really fun way to add underglaze. That's the one. I love this picture. That's why I keep it. It's, it's mine. So look at this sweet thing right here. This is Maolica. I glazed it with Clayscape's cream glaze. This is Laguna B mix. So it's glazed with the cream glaze. And then after it was glazed, not fired, it was just glazed. Wait for your glaze to dry. I actually painted on with speedball underglaze. That's what these underglazes are, speedball. And uh, look at this. It has a very old world feel to it. I just, I love this picture. Uh, I need to make some cups to match it. This is like one of my favorites. Love it. You need to make some lemonade to put in it. Well, you get on the lemonade. I made the pitcher. I made the pitcher. I am not making the lemonade, too. He has to make the lemonade. <laughs> I shouldn't have to do everything. Oh, goodness me. So can, what temperature can you fire them to? These will fire to cone 10. So 05 to cone 10. That's a huge firing range. So if you do low fire work, these will be fine. If you do high fire, same. You can use them in a cone 10 firing. Now I do cone five. Once in a while I go to cone six. Mostly I'm a cone five girl. Um, you know, that's just because the clay I use is Laguna B mix five. That five is important because it's meant to go to cone five. That's why it's called B mix five. So let's wipe this back one, this one off. Kind of a splotchy pink and purple thing happening on this one. So does the color on top of the glaze ever run? If your glaze, yeah, so that Maolica picture, if your glaze is fluxing, meaning melting, then yeah, it can run. Yes, 
because you're putting it on top, right? But I think that adds to the charm of it. A little bit of softness to your, to your design, I think it adds to it personally. So I'm wiping off and it'll let some of that texture, the raised areas, just go back to the clay color and anything recessed, the color is going to be down in. So we have to wait to see what that's going to look like. And if you wanted, like right here, I have this one little area where I wiped some off of the blue. And if you really, really wanted blue in that area, guess what? You can just go in and paint a little bit on there like that and put it back in. Easy. <laughs> I know the blue, that blue. So I'm going to show you all the colors again, and then I, that's what we did tonight. Let's go ahead and look at all the colors again. So we have carmine. That's this red here. We have flame red. We have mandarin orange right there. We have peach, saffron yellow. Make sure you all can see them. And then we get into the greens. We have avocado green, leaf green. There's that gorgeous blue frost, teal, royal purple. Ooh, where'd my amethyst go off to? And my amethyst ran away. No, it's over here. Amethyst. Ooh. And then the soft pink. All right. So that's the new, the new colors. Do you guys have any more questions for me? Um, you guys because that's what I'm here for. So did Speedball change the bottle for the underglaze? They sure did, Glenna, yes. So here's the new bottles right here. Big, 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 big mouth. Here's the old bottles. So even their labels are new. And the old bottles had the teeny opening. And what would happen is, as you can see with this one, is the underglaze will build up in that opening, making it even smaller. So they switched. All of their underglazes that are being produced now are with the wide mouth jars, although some stores still have the small ones in stock, just so you know. But the new colors, all of the new colors are going to be with the wide mouth jars, all of them, like that, just like this. So let's see, the bottles are a pain. Glenna, I agree with you, and that's why they changed it. So am I going to have a kiln opening this weekend? That is going to depend on my Friday. If I can get the entire kiln load of work glazed and in, yes. If not, maybe not. Because I've got a lot of stuff going on, I'm trying to get a kiln opening done. I'm trying to get stuff glazed. But there's a lot happening in clay share. So, um, We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I'll tell you Friday, how's that? Because Friday I will know, because I'm glazing all day Friday. But I did mix up my new raspberry, my new um, cranberry glaze, and my orbe, and another batch of my chun, which I'll be doing at least test pieces with. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. The old colors will have the new bottles too. Yes, they will. And I just answered it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and Nima, you just got yours from Clay Sharon. They were still in the old bottles, but they were just the regular ones. Right, so the new colors will all be, and going forward, they'll all be in the wide mouth jars. Distributors are going to have old stock. Right, so a distributor might have old stock, and that's something we can't, you know, we can't do anything about. But um, just use a lot of your underglaze, and that way you can buy a new bottle. <laughs> Yeah, the saffron yellow and the red together. Did I do? Hmm. Um, I didn't. I did flame orange. I mean, I have the yellow and nope, didn't do that. Didn't do the carmine. But you can see they've got some gorgeous. I did do it with pink, though, because, you know. So after I pay on the underglaze design, on the clear glaze, do you need to put more glaze on? No, you do not. No, you've done your glazing. So what happens with that process is you've glazed your piece already. You paint your underglaze on top. You put it in the kiln, and when you fire it, the glaze is going to soften and melt. And your underglaze is actually, so that, imagine, here's your glaze, underglaze sitting on top. What's going to happen is your underglaze is going to melt down in. So it's like mush right into the glaze. So basically it embeds itself.
so you don't have to put glaze on top. You've already glazed it once, don't glaze it again. You're done. I know it seems like it wouldn't work, but it does. So I have to give a thank you to everybody who's hung out with me. Everybody on Instagram, they're gonna, they're leaving because they leave early. Bye Instagram, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Everybody else, so we have, any more questions? You missed the class? Is there a kind of deal? Yes, we got a couple deals. We got uh, Clay Share has a deal with Clay Skates Pottery, and I have a, co uh, a link to say 40% off on Clay King, and I will hook you all up with that link. I've got to get that and send that to you. And Clay Skates Pottery is doing 20% off, and you have to check both because there's shipping and there's other things. So, what the bottom line is is different than what you might think it is. You'll have to just go put it in your cart and see which is the better deal. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so let's see, um, anything else you all got? No, I think we're good, I got all, all right. So those of you who are my premium members, I will see you in a few minutes. Remember, we're giving away three 12 packs of underglaze next Wednesday. That's what the, we're gonna do that. We're giving them away. And then I'll do a little tutorial too. But um, to enter, if you're a premium member, you don't have to do anything. You're automatically entered. Everybody else, go to clayshare.com, sign up for our emails, and that's how you get entered. Now, the way it works, if you live in the US, you're good to go. Enter all you want. Um, if you're outside of the US, you'd have to pay shipping if you win. That's the deal. So, something to think about. All right, everyone, have a fabulous night. I will let everybody know Friday if there'll be a kiln opening. I'm gonna try, I am hoping, I can get a kiln opening done, but we will have to wait and see. All right, everyone, thanks for hanging out here with me. I will catch you next Wednesday for the giveaway of the new Speedball Underglazes and all my awesome premium members. I will see you at 6.15. Bye, everybody.